video we'll talk about loops. Now what is loop basically? So let's say if you have a statement or if you have a bunch of statements and if you want to execute them multiple times. What I'm saying is let's say we have one statement. Yes, we can have multiple statements as well. But let's focus on one statement as of now. I want to print, let's say ln, I want to print the scope. The moment you want, the moment you say you want to print it and if you want to execute this code, of course it will print telescope for you. But what if you want to print this telescope multiple times? So what do you think? Uh, so that's right, we can just copy this code and we can write it multiple times, right? So we can say once, then second, third time, fourth time, fifth time. And then if you run this code now, it will print telescope. So you can say it's printing telescope five times and that's, why, that's how you can do it. But what if you have a bunch of statements, let's say 10 statements or 15 statements and you want to repeat it, you want to execute them repeatedly. So what do you think? Will you copy paste all the codes and that will be redundancy, right? And redundancy is a crime. Don't do that. So never repeat your code. Uh, so what we can do is we can take this one statement, which is telescope and you can repeat it. And the way you can do that is by using a block. So you can just open the block and you can just close this block here and you can say, hey, just repeat this block. Uh, but how? Uh, so for that, we have to use some looping statement. Now in different languages like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, in all these languages, we have three different types of loops. We have while loop, do while loop, for loop. In fact, in Unix, we have until loop as well. But in Go language, we have only one. And that's great, right? And everyone loved that particular loop, which is a for loop. So basically, when you say for, it means it will repeat the statement. So this is a loop. So for is a loop. And it will repeat the statement multiple times. Uh, and then with the moment you save this, oh, if you're coming from a different language, I know, I mean, I know you what you're thinking. You're thinking this will not work because when you say a loop, we have to specify some conditions. We have to say assignment. Let's try what happens. The moment you go back and when you execute this code, uh, can you see that? It is working. You are getting telescope multiple times. It's just that it is not getting stopped. Uh, it is continuously printing that telescope, telescope, telescope. You can, you can, if I scroll down, it's still going on. I just have to stop it because my machine will get hanged then. Uh, so you can say control C to stop the execution and then you can see it stopped. That's how you can repeat something in, in programming using loops. So as I mentioned in Go, we have for loop, uh, but then you'll be thinking, hey, this is not something I want because this will print something in infinite way. I want to print it in for limited set, let's say five times, 10 times, 100 times, or maybe I want to do that based on some conditions. Uh, for different language like C, C++, Java, we use while there. Uh, we have do while which will check for the condition later. Go does everything with the help of one loop which is for. So for has different types in it. Okay. Uh, the first type is which we have seen where we don't have to specify the condition or increment something. This is one syntax. The next one is what if you want to uh, count. So let's say I want to count from 1 to 10. I want to print telescope five times let's say. In that case, you need to specify a condition. Now, when you say a condition, it simply means you will check. Example, let's say if you are giving money to someone, let's say you want to you want to give 500 rupees. In that case, you will count one. Uh, so let's say you have 100 rupees uh, bundle. And then what you will do is you will give one. So you will count one, two, three, four, five. So basically you apply a counter, right? In the same way here, uh, we have to apply a counter and we have to check. Is it less than five? Is it less than equal to five? Then, then go ahead. So we can use a simple variable, let's say i, any variable name which you prefer, but i is a go to counter. So let's say, uh, let's apply a condition. The way you can do that is by using uh, angular bracket equal to five. So this is where you're saying, hey, uh, if the value of i is less than equal to five, then go for it. But then we have not created this variable i, and then we are not even incrementing it. That's why you have to do, right? You have to change the value of i. So for, for doing that, if I say save, you can see we got an error. It says the same thing. We have not declared the variable i. Let's do that. So I will go back here. I will say i is uh, i colon equal to one shortcut. And you can see now, if I, if I run this code, what do you think? Will it work? Don't want to say, say enter, but still you're getting multiple times. Uh, I want to stop it. So let me just do it manually. Uh, what is going wrong here? The problem is we are saying we are using loop. That's great. We are also specifying condition, but then we have to also increment it, right? So if, when you say one, you will not simply say one, 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 one. You have to increment it. You have to say one, two, three. Uh, so after every printing of the disk, I can say I plus plus. That's how you increment. So basically plus plus is an increment operator in programming. So it is, it is uh, famous in different languages available. Uh, so I plus plus simply means increment. In fact, uh, we can say I is equal to I plus one. 
It's just that instead of doing this lengthy step, we can do it shortcut. So we can say I plus plus, right? And now it should work. I'm expecting this to work now. Let's say run and it worked. Can you see that we got Telesco five times? In fact, with Telesco, I will also print the value of I just to check uh, how the I is getting incremented. Uh, so let's save this and let's go back here. Say run. And you can see that uh, the value of i is also getting printed, which is one, two, three, four, five. That's great, right? So this is the second syntax we can use for for loop. The first one was infinite, where you can specify the condition inside the for loop. We have not done that, but you can do it. Or you can specify the condition with a for loop, which we are doing here. The third syntax is, don't you think we are writing these three statements? One, which is initialization. Uh, second is the condition and increment. Instead of writing those things in three different lines, we can do that in one line. How? We can just write, so we can just cut this part and we can write it here itself. The same line with the condition and this increment decrement as well or increment part as well on the same line and it should work. The only thing is you have to differentiate these lines with the help of semicolon. So you have to put semicolon after this one and after condition as well. So basically you are separating these three, three different statements with semicolon. Yeah, that's right. So you are not running away from semicolons in programming. Uh, we still have to use it. And now it should work. Let's try and let's run. And you got it. That's how you use for loop in Go. Yeah, so that's about it. Uh, so your assignment would be you have to print numbers from 1 to 100. Okay, with the help of same concept. Just do it and let me know in the comment section. Uh, so that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye-bye.